Hello, my name is Kevin Monahan, and I would like to talk to you about Ports and Passes. Ports and Passes is the only tide and current guide that covers the entire Pacific Northwest from Olympia, Washington to Glacier Bay, Alaska, and that is also derived from official sources. So what do you say? Let's take a look inside. One of the first things you will notice about ports and passes is the overview charts. This is chart two of four. On the overview chart, you will see squares in red that identify current stations and green circles that identify tide stations. Another thing you will notice about ports and passes is that there are certain stations that are reference stations. A reference station is a station that has been studied for an extended period of time and that can act as a model for other what we call secondary stations in the same general area. In this case, we're looking at Point Atkinson in West Vancouver. And you can see that the entire area that is colored in green, which is most of the Strait of Georgia, is reference to Point Atkinson. And by this, we mean that corrections are supplied in a secondary table for secondary stations that give you corrections so that you can apply those corrections to the reference station and obtain the information for the secondary station. As you can see here, False Bay, for instance, high water is three minutes after high water at Point Atkinson and low water is five minutes after high water at Point Atkinson. There's no reason in the world that we would tabulate False Bay. It's so close to the Point Atkinson numbers that we simply provide you with corrections. We have, however, for certain areas that are well visited like Comox, Nanaimo, Pender Harbor, we have provided the full tabulations and predictions for those specific locations. So let's take a look at the table of reference stations. As you can see at the top of the page, there are a number of Canadian and American tide stations listed and at the bottom of the page are the reference current stations. Now, in this video, I'm going to focus on current stations because that is generally the item that is greater interest to most voters. You can see that there are a number of different reference stations listed, and some of them are very critical, some of them not so much. Gillard Passage is a critical reference station. Gillard Passage as you can see is um, because its name is in red on the margins that indicates that this is a current station. And you can also notice at the bottom of the page that the direction of the flood and ebb currents are identified at the bottom of the page. And this is important information because sometimes it's not immediately obvious which direction the flood or the ebb goes. Now let's take a closer look at the February page for Gillard Passage. And you can see that we have the date and then we have three columns beside the date. SLK stands for slack. And that is when the water is not moving one direction or the other. Maximum, that is the column of the times of maximum current and the column titled F slash E is the speed of the current. The plus sign indicates that it is a flood current. The minus sign indicates that it is an ebb current. And as you know, the currents alternate between flood and ebb. On the 2nd of February, you can see that the slack water, the first slack water of the day is at 1.15 a.m. Now you will note that we use a.m. and p.m. In other words, the 12 hour clock in ports and passes 
what you may not know is that we also have adjusted the time for daylight savings time. So you don't have to do any calculation to determine the time of the slack water. The next title uh, information comes at 4.26 a.m. and that is the time of the maximum current and that maximum current is at 9.8 knots and that is a flood current. The current then diminishes and eventually it's slack again at 7.53 a.m. It's slack for a short period then it starts to rise again and at 10.53 a.m. it's at maximum and the maximum ebb current there is 8.0 knots. So you see that there's two flood currents and two ebb currents per day, and this is typical of the Pacific Northwest. Now, let's take a look at the table of secondary stations. And you can see that based on Gillard Passage at the top of the page, we have Dent Rapids. Dent Rapids is an important rapids on the way north out of the Strait of Georgia on the way to the Broughtons. And so we need to pin down the times of and the strength of the current. To do that, we take note that here, the turn to flood at Dent Rapids occurs 15 minutes before the turn to flood at Gillard Passage. And the turn to ebb occurs 25 minutes before the turn to ebb at Gillard Passage. As we go along here, we'll see that the maximum ebb and the maximum flood are not given for this location, so there's not much we can do about that. But we can determine the speed of the maximum ebb and the maximum flood. The maximum flood is going to be 90% of the maximum flood at Gillard Passage on that particular current cycle. And the ebb is going to be 100% of the current speed at Gillard Passage. So these are called the percent reference rate, but they are also called in the United States speed ratio. Now, we have a series of worksheets in ports and passes that will help you to do the calculations to determine the time and the strength of the currents at Dent Rapids. So let's take a look at this. This is our calculation worksheet. And as you can see, it has a space for the reference station, a space for the corrections that come from the secondary tables. And then once they're applied, we get our answers for the secondary station. Our secondary station here will be Dent Rapids and the reference station is Gillard Passage. The date is February the 2nd, 2021. We then take the information directly from the uh, current tables for Gillard Passage and we enter that information here. So this is the information for the 2nd of February for Gillard Passage. Now, you will notice that the first line is a flood current. And so we put that on the line that is titled TTF. If the first line, if the first event of the day was an ebb current, then we would start that on the line that says TTE, turn to ebb, as opposed to turn to flood. Now let's go get our corrections from the secondary table. And we enter those here. As you can see, the uh, time of the turn to flood is 15 minutes before Gillard Passage, and the time of the turn to ebb is 25 minutes before Gillard Passage. The flood current strength will be 90% of the flood current at Gillard Passage, and the ebb current strength will be 100% of the ebb current strength at Gillard Passage. So all we do now is we apply the corrections for timing and the corrections for the speed ratio, and we end up with the information for the secondary station right here. As you can see, the time of turn to flood at Dent Rapids is at 1 a.m. 
and the strength of the current it will be 8.8 .8 knots at maximum. The time of the turn to ebb will be at 728 and the strength of that ebb at maximum speed will be 8.0 knots. So we've taken the information for Gillard passage, we've applied the corrections to it, and now we have the tidal and current information for Dent Rapids. Why do we go through all this? Why use a paper-based system when it's far more complex than simply using a Tide app on my smartphone, for instance? And the answer is that the measure of the quality of the Tide app is the quality of its data source. Do you know where the data comes from for your app? We do know where the data comes from for ports and passes. It uses data from official sources only. And the, the reason we look for official sources is not specifically that we are obliged to use the official sources or that we're focused on official sources only, but the fact is that the official sources are made by the people that actually do the surveys. And so it, the information is straight from the horse's mouth, so to speak. Ports and Passes is available in Canada from portsandpasses.com and in the US from wagonerguidebooks.com. It's also available as an ebook from amazon.com. The Ebook comes in three volumes and can be easily read on any phone or tablet by downloading the free Amazon Kindle reader. And then you can simply read the ports and passes on your tablet or smartphone. Not only that, but you can use ports and passes on any device that's connected to your Amazon account. I would like to thank you. I would like to thank you for coming here today and joining me. And I hope you enjoy the boat show.